Hello everybody, so today we're going to be doing some basic statistics on some data sets that we have. Um, and that's going to include calculating the average, standard deviation, maximum and minim minimum values for a data set, and the range. Um, so here I have some data that I generated on the mass of cake batter um, between pans run on where the cake was baked on different days. And so it would be nice to really be able to read this, but we can't at the moment. So what we're going to do first is fix this so that we can actually read it. One thing that you can do if you want to make it bigger is you can highlight all of the columns and then double click on the partition on one of them and it will expand it. Um, and that's great, we can now read it, but this text is much wider than our actual numbers and so that may not be the best way to actually see the data. Another option that you can do, and this is the one that I personally prefer, is to wrap the text. So what we're going to do is highlight just the row, go up to this button on our toolbar, which says wrap text, and we're going to click on that. And now what it's going to do is when it starts to overlap, it's going to instead wrap the text down. And I find this to be much more legible now. Another thing that you can do to increase the legibility of your document is to merge cells. And so maybe we want to actually merge our title across all of the columns in our data sheet. We can highlight um, those, those cells that we want to merge and click Merge and Center, and it will automatically center. Maybe we don't want to center. We can change that back to Left Justified if we want. Okay. Um, merging will mess up some types of sorting and filtering options if you ever have to do that, so keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> so you may have to unmerge before you do sorting and filtering if, if you end up doing any of those things. Um, we may get to some of that in this course. We will see. So we have these data sets and we want to compare them. So we have column B, which consists of a data set for uh, baker number one. And we have column C, which is the data set for baker number two. And they're essentially baking cakes, the same cakes, the same day. And we want to compare how variable is their mass of their cake batter. And hopefully we would assume the mass of the final resulting cake. So what we want to do is first calculate the average of this values, and that just tells us the sample, that's the sample mean. And so in Excel, you calculate this as equals average. And then you can either write in the values, or I like to click and drag sometimes. So in this case, we're going from cell B3, B3, down to B12. And so we have our average for operator number one. Um, we can also do the same thing for the standard deviation. The standard deviation is equals STDEV. There are a couple of options here. Generally, you're going to want to use just the STDEV option. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing. Click and drag B3 to B12 or typing it in. Same thing with the minimum, with the maximum and minimum. The maximum is equals max. Minimum is equals min. And the range is just the difference between the two. So equals max minus min. And so we have a range of 45 grams. So that's pretty good. Not a big difference. Um, but we want to do the same thing for the massive cake batter by operator number two. Um, and we could type in everything like we did before. Or we could be a little sneaky and just copy by clicking and drag to fill. So what this is going to do is it's going to take that formula and it's going to copy it over. But instead of being the same um, data set, it's going to, because we filled over, it's going to move everything over by one column. Okay, so now everything should apply to the new column. Great, so now we have our average. We can see that the average is pretty close for these two, but the standard deviation is quite different. So operator number two has much less variation in their mass of their cake batter that they're adding. They're much more precise. Okay, now we can try and report this data graphically. One way to do that would maybe be using a bar chart. Let's try that and see if it works well. So we're going to put in a bar chart by going to Insert, 2D Column. Okay, now it looks like there's a big difference in these two data sets, right? Let's add in some error bars so we can add in our standard deviations. So this is typically how you'd add standard deviation values to bar charts. So we're going to go down to, um, on the Chart Design tab, we're going to add Chart Element and go down to Error Bars. Don't use any of these options. Use the More Error Bars option. And then we're going to go over to Custom on the Graph tab and we're going to specify our values. So the positive values are going to be copying the two 
uh, columns in the standard deviation row. And we're going to do it the same for both the top and the bottom, B15 to C15. All right, so when we're zoomed in, we can see that um, number one, they have very similar averages, but number one has a significantly larger variation. The problem with this is that bar chart should, should always start at zero. If you don't want to start at zero, there are other ways you want to plot the data, probably using a, a scatter plot um, or something along those lines. So if we plot it at zero, we can see that, wow, it's really hard to tell actually that there's any variability between these two data sets. And we can see that it's really hard because the variation is actually pretty low. Um, which one is actually more? It does look like this one's more, but it's hard to see. Okay, so if you were to actually, uh, so this may not be the best way to actually plot this data point, uh, this data set. So if you were actually to do this, um, you don't necessarily need a title. It really depends on how you're presenting the data. Um, if you're doing it in a report or a journal article, usually your title would be your, your legend, your figure, um, not your figure legend, your figure reference. Um, but you do definitely need axis labels. So we, what we want to do is, you can see this is currently one and two, but we want to actually label it with the labels at the top of our sheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into, we're going to right click on this. We're going to go to select data. And you can see our chart data range. We have a series, we're going to give it a name. Um, but that's not really what we want to, we could give it a name, but we really want to give it horizontal labels. And so this will be the labels on the bottom. And what we can do is we can highlight that row. I'll say, okay. And so now you can see that it shows up and we could alter these. So maybe we just want to say operator one and operator number two. And then that's much simpler and easier to read. The other thing that we're going to need is a axis label. So if we go back to chart design, add chart element, we want to have an axis title. And we don't really need one on the horizontal, but we definitely need one on the vertical. So our axis title in this case would be mass of cake batter in grams. And we can go in and we can do some tweaking of the formatting. Maybe we want to make it bold. Maybe we want to increase the size. We can do that by clicking on this increase button and the same thing with the bottom. We want to highlight those. And so there you go. That's how you make a bar chart and do some basic stats in Excel. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to try a different graph that I think is a better way of analyzing this data called a run chart.